experience for the last 15 months. COVID has kept a lot of us away from church. Some of us went other places while being away from church, but he kept us still, amen? So, um, we are going to express our feelings today for the Lord Almighty for sparing us to be here today. We've been through the storm, we've been through the rain, but God has kept us no matter what. So today we celebrate 77 years of Holy Chapel's existence. Stand to your feet and just give an applause for 77 years of service. my eyes unto the hills from which coming my help, my help coming from the Lord, giving praises to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Pastor Thomas and all the ministers that grace the pulpit, to my Holy Chapel Church family. It is a privilege and a pleasure to give reflection on such an awesome occasion. This is how I got acquainted with Holy Chapel. I came to Los Angeles every summer to see my mother, the late Bertha Mason. We lived on 116th Street off Compton Avenue. Next street was 118 Ala and Alabama. On that street, the Cotton family lived. I saw a little church around the corner named Holy Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. I went to Sunday school every Sunday. When summer was over, my grandmother and I went back to Arkansas. When I graduated from high school, I came back to Los Angeles to live with my mother. I was 17 years old. Holy Chapel had moved to 11676 South Central Avenue, Los Angeles. I joined Holy Chapel Missionary Baptist Church on October 26, 1958, under the leadership of the late Reverend William Cobbs. 
I still remember the pulpit was in was the late Ernest Bobby Senior, the late Reverend Lionel Dawson, the late Reverend W. F. Washington, Reverend Robert Frank Mason. They did not have a church. I still remember the church clerks was Idella Rattler. I remember when the deacons would do praise and worship. What a time. I still remember Papa Deacon Joe Porter standing there singing, I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on Jesus, hallelujah. I remember Vacation Bible School under the leadership of Sister Nancy Brown. My mother Georgia Dunlap lived next to the church. Mother Dunlap was Dorothy McCullough's aunt who keep the babies that were too, that were too little for BBA Vacation Bible School. Her women cars would come by to see if we were okay before he went to work. Remember the youth choir. The late Reverend Dawson was president. What a time, what a time. The late Pastor George Cobbs was elected after the passing of his brother William Cobbs in 1985. I could write a book, but time will not permit. The late Reverend Donnie Dawson was over over Holy Chapel for 18 months. My pastor, George R. Thomas, when he came to Holy Chapel, my mother saw him, and she said to him, I hear you are going to be our pastor. She told him, yes. We have to, so she said, we have to put some weight on you because you're too little to be our pastor. On the first Sunday he came to church in the pastor elect, my family stepped out of this white limousine. He told me to put the children on the front bench. I took them there. Louis, Sonia, and Ernest. I am one of the teenagers that left at the Hood Chapel, Geraldine Sturblinship and Maxine Chase Williams. is the only one left at the time of I served. I worked in the Sunday school as secretary of Sunday school under the direction of Brother Mose Crawford, uh, Deacon S. Boyd, my husband, the late Dan Blankenship was ordained by Reverend George Cobbs, and after which, I, before that, I met him there. I met him in 1962, and we got married in 1963. That's enough. Oh, thank the Lord for He is good. For his loving kindness is forever. Psalms 118, 1. Happy birthday, Holy Chapel. I am a proud, I am proud and blessed to be a member of, of 63 years. Happy birthday. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, my God will take care of you beneath his wings. Of love abide, my God will take care of you. Happy birthday.
27 Church Anniversary Reflections by Nancy R. Brown. Giving honor and praise to God, respects to Pastor Thomas, my church family, visitors, and friends. Good morning. I would like to thank Sister Young for allowing me the opportunity to bring the reflection on this, our church 77th anniversary, of which I've been an active member of 63 years. Reflecting back to 1952, my journey started when I decided to join my husband in California, who was serving our country as a U.S. Marine stationed in Oceanside. This country girl had never traveled more than 30 miles from home, and now she was embarking on a 3,000 miles venture alone. But before I left, my pastor prayed for safe travel and advised me to find a church to unite with so I would have spiritual guidance and protection by God. Nevertheless, to say I didn't look for a church right away. Several years had passed and time seems to get harder. As I wondered whether I had made the right choice in coming to California, my mind went back to the promise I made my pastor that I would find a church home. I visited several churches in the city, but none remind me of home. They were cordial and standoffish, which was not what I was used to. Sometimes I would find myself standing alone with my children waiting for my husband to pick us up. You would have thought one person would have offered to stay to make sure we made it safely home. One Sunday, we decided to drive down Central Avenue, and I spotted a large congregation of people outside this church. The building didn't have a name on it and looked new, so I decided to stop. Upon walking up to this large crowd, I was greeted with Big smiles, hellos, how are you, and hugs like I had back home. I felt like I was no stranger to them. And when I met the pastor, I was treated the same way. I knew then this was where I wanted to be. So shortly after, my two children, and I joined, and a year later, my husband joined. Several months later, my baby girl was born into the church family, and now my circle was complete. Now to begin this journey, I will not be using individual names except for my pastors. Why? Because my church family is so large and I do not want to miss anyone and time is of the essence. Pastor William Cobbs, founder and pastor of this great church. He was a father figure for me. He gave me spiritual guidance as well as physical support. He was never in a hurry 
and he made sure I understood some of the challenges a young wife and mother would have in life. He made me feel like I could go out and conquer the world. I needed that because I needed to know how to stand firm in my belief. Pastor George Cobbs, a little man in stature, but he stood tall in carrying out God's mission. He proclaimed God's word to the very end. God taken him home to be with him after delivering a dynamic sermon. This taught me to stay focused regardless of the conditions you're faced with. Pastor George Thomas, pastor, teacher, singer, to name a few of his talents. I would like to reflect on how he deal with situations in time of crisis, which were many, but my most memorable one was when my husband suddenly passed away. My family was in shock and falling apart. He arrived praying for us speaking confident words and embracing us with his hugs, reassuring us that everything was going to be all right. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Church family, I've had the honor of knowing so many wonderful and caring members over the years. One memory that stood out is I had four mothers that helped me raise my children. I can remember when my last child was born, they were there to help keep my house intact. They knew my family was 3,000 miles away and I would need a helping hand. Sisters and brothers, my life is filled with beautiful sisters and brothers that I can call on any time I need them, whether physical or spiritual. Children and Youth Department. I love to think about the children I've had the privilege of working with in many areas of the church, such as Vacation Bible School, BTU, Youth Church, and the Youth Choir. Studying God's Word, performing skits and plays, going on trips and to the park, even started the Snack Shack, which we raised money to finance our out outings. <laughs> These are memories I'll never forget. These children have since grown up, some pastors, teachers, singers, doctors, lawyers, parents, grandparents, and the list goes on and on and on. It brings a smile to my face knowing that I was a small part of their lives. So many have spoken to me over the years and we have relived those warm, wondrous memories. They tell me what an impact I made by just being there for them. 
I am so blessed. The Lord has kept me here 92 years, and I was able to be used in different areas of my church to carry out his plan. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Come to the Father, through Jesus the Son. Give him the glory, great things he has done. Happy anniversary, Holy Chapel. Now, I'm delighted to be able to present our speaker uh, but before I do so, let me say this to you. Uh, it has been a pretty lengthy experience, but a good one. My friend and my brother came because I asked him to. He's been seated and never gotten up. He heard everything. He experienced everything. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not over yet. That's important because the same respect that he paid to you, I want you now to pay it to him. This choir is going to minister to all. And then this great pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church of Los Angeles, California. My dear friend, beloved, he is. My brother in the Lord. And my cousin in the flesh. I want you to hear him. The choir is going to sing. The next voice you'll hear will be that of Pastor Victor Green. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.
Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Choir said he's a great God. And he truly is. The word of God says great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. Now why don't you thank God for these 77 years as well. To my friend, my brother, one whom I love and highly respect my cousin, Pastor George L. Thomas, and to all of the ministers, preachers, evangelists in the house, and chairman, deacon ministry here at Holy Chapel, and all of the deacons, mothers, and officers, deaconess of this church, God bless you. We thank God for the opportunity to come and share with you on this day. Normal situation, of course, myself and the New Bethel family would have been here uh, this past week on Thursday night, I believe. And uh, we thank God for the opportunity just to come and represent and certainly continue the friendship and the fellowship. Amen. Uh, I thank God for the presence of my cupcake. Amen. Sister Green is in the house. Amen. Amen. Stand up briefly, Sister Green. Somebody may not know who you are. Amen. And then I was surprised and blessed as well to see a few of our members here with us as well. Amen. Now, I know that, uh, as Pastor Thomas has already stated, uh, time has been well spent and we do thank God for the celebration or the 
has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. I've often said over the years that um, Holy Chapel and New Bethel, we have a lot in common, actually. Uh, Holy Chapel just turned 77 years old, and uh, New Bethel is about to turn 75 years old. And uh, within those 77 years, Holy Chapel has been blessed uh, with three pastors, Pastor Thomas being the third, and I happen to be the third pastor of New Bethel. Okay. Amen. And so, we have a lot in common. Thank God for the continued uh, friendship and fellowship. I'm not going to uh, hold you long. Um, although we are here celebrating with you, I, I do need to go stick my head in the door at New Bethel as well. And so we're going to uh, do what the Lord has sent us to do in gracious invitation to come from Pastor Thomas and the committee today and share with you today. And so I'm not a stranger to Holy Chapel and certainly you're not a stranger to me. Uh, pray for us for a little while and we'll let the Holy Spirit do the rest. I want to try to tie uh, two passages of scripture together as we would look at your theme in the Old Testament book of Psalms, the 90th number of Psalms. Psalms 90, and then I want you to uh, quickly go with me over to the book of Lamentations, uh, and we'll share, we'll read into your hearing just a couple of verses from that third chapter. The Old Testament book of Psalms 90 your theme, verses 1 and 2, you'll find these are similar words recorded. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And then in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, beginning at verse 21, again you'll find these or similar words recorded. This I recall to my mind, therefore I hope. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And just want to uh, undergird your theme, a thankful people serving a faithful God a thankful people serving a faithful God. Now, if you had to tag, so to speak, a subtopic there, you could use many, uh, such as thank God for another day, thank God for a new beginning, Thank God for another chance, all of them would apply. In the 90th number of Psalms, Moses uh, really talks about the sovereignness of God 
the eternity of God, the fact that he simply is that he is. Remember, uh, God himself said, I am that I am. He is God and he is God all by himself. Amen. Moses helps us to understand that because God is God, and no matter how much man thinks he's in control, uh, God is still on the throne. He's still calling the shots. Moses talks about the brevity of life. You do recall at one point, uh, God allowed man to live hundreds and hundreds of years. There were those who lived over 900 years. Amen. And then after the flood, God shortens ma shortened man's days to about 120 years. And here in the 90th number of Psalms, Moses makes it clear that uh, 70 has pretty much been promised. Uh, and if we are uh, blessed, uh, we might see 80. Uh, the truth of the matter, my brothers and sisters, is it's really not about how long we live but rather how we live. Can I get a witness here? What we do with the time that God has given us. There are many, there are many who will see a hundred years old, but then there are those who may not see but 20. Some may see 15, some may see 40, 30, whatever the case. We must remember that while we're living, only what we do for Christ is going to last. And that's why the word says, treat others like you want to be treated. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so, and so, and so, if you really examine this particular psalms, it, 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 it talks about God's judgment, but it also speaks about God's mercy, his love, his kindness, his favor towards his people. And then even in the book of James, that fourth chapter, James helps us to understand this, what Moses was trying to say, by see, simply saying that our life is as a vapor. Uh, we're here and then we're gone that quickly. Can I get a witness here? And so Moses, 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 Moses sort of concludes by saying, well, well, help us, Lord, to understand that we're here today and basically we can be gone today. He says in that 12th verse, uh, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom uh, that we can understand that we have a brief time here upon this earth. And again, it's not about so much how long we live, but how we live. Now, my brothers and my sisters, uh, every last one of us have been in some situations, some circumstances uh, that have caused us at one point in time in our lives to really be out of the will of God. For all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Sometimes we are disobedient. 
and God will discipline us. Um, but we ought to thank God for another chance, another opportunity. Can I get a witness here? In these two passages that uh, read into your hearing in Psalms 90 and Lamentations, the third chapter, the good news, the good news, the good news is that because God is sovereign, because he's God all by himself, he's also filled with mercy. He's filled with love. He's, he's filled with grace. And, and my brothers and my sisters, there's somebody here today who needs to understand that although life can be hard at times, there are moments when we will face tragedy after tragedy, disappointment after disappointment. Remember the word says, in this life, you will have some troubles. You'll have some trials. You'll have some mountaintop experiences, but then you'll have to go through the valley every now and then. Amen. The good news is that even in the midst of all of that, in the midst of our darkest days, there is a ray of hope. The sun will shine. Can I get a witness here? The sun will shine again. That's why one writer said, weeping may endure for a night, but if you hold on and hold out, joy will come in the morning. In that third chapter of the book of Lamentations, right around that 18th verse, uh, Jeremiah talked about the fact that his strength uh, and his hope had perished from the Lord. In other words, Jeremiah basically kind of gave up on his expectation of God's ability to help him. Simply put, he started doubting God. Amen. And my brothers and my sisters, whenever that happens, uh, that's exactly where Satan wants us to be. Satan wants us to doubt God. He wants us to question God. He wants us to feel like God doesn't really care about us. And so Jeremiah basically started complaining. And what he was really saying was, God, I'm tired of waiting on you. God, I'm tired of being patient. God, I'm tired of this pain that I'm in. God, I'm tired of suffering. I'm tired of staying and, and, and simply standing still because it seems like nothing is ever going to change. God, I'm just simply tired. Jeremiah was struggling really between his faith and doubt, his faith and unbelief. And so like so many of us today, especially when you consider what we've endured over the past year and a half, and even those who are still going through and what we're still enduring all across this nation and the world, my brothers and my sisters, so many problems, so much sickness, so much death, so much trouble, so much injustices, and so much racial problems and social problems and all of that. Every now and then, we can feel like life has totally beat us down. But thank God for another day. When our hearts become overwhelmed by the circumstances of life and we feel like God has somehow deserted us or God has somehow a man turned his back on us. We need to remember the words of Moses when he said that you are from everlasting to everlasting. Our God never changes. Jesus the Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We need to remember that the same God who took care of us yesterday He's taking care of us today. The same God who provided for us yesterday. The same God who provided last year. Who provided five years ago. He's providing for us today. That's why Moses says you've been our dwelling place. You've been our refuge. Our fortress. 
our protection, our hiding place. Can I get a witness here? And somebody needs to know that no matter your situation, no matter your circumstances, no matter your problem, no matter your burden, no matter your pain, amen, God has not forgotten you. He says, I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. In other words, you can count on God. Remember the word says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let me try to quickly leave three points with you and I'm going to take my seat. A thankful people serving a faithful God. Well, 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 we have as the body of Christ, we have many things that we should be thankful for. But I just want to try to uh, extract three uh, points from this passage, these passages, and then I'll take my seat. First and foremost, the church, individually and collectively, we ought to, every day of our lives, thank God for his mercy. In the Lamentations passage that I read, and to your hearing, it says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. My brothers and my sisters, over the past 77 years, God has been merciful to Holy Chapel. Amen. Amen. Just, just, just like God has been merciful to New Bethel, and every other church that has stood in his name. Mercy, according to scripture, is God's withholding of a just punishment. In other words, we deserve to be punished. You remember, you remember, you remember a lot of those old television shows, how the individual would simply state, I'm throwing myself on the mercy of the court. Amen. I know that I'm wrong. I know that I'm guilty. I know that I'm not right. But I pray that you would have mercy on me. Can I get a witness here? And I don't know about you, but I thank God for his mercy. Amen. Because see, when you understand God's mercy, you understand that it's speaking about his loving kindness, his Amen. Mercies is a very expressive word, and it conveys the idea of God's love, his grace, his mercy, his faithfulness, his goodness, his favor, his devotion. is all tied up in there. Psalm has said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Can I get a witness here? talks about, speaks about his compassion. Amen. Compassion means to be moved in the heart. Amen. It's one thing to just tell somebody, amen, that I'm filled with compassion, but compassion is, 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 is an action word. There's got to be some action behind it. Can I get a witness here? You got to do something. The word, the Bible tells us throughout scripture that Jesus was moved. He was filled with compassion. And as a result, he healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He cast out demons. He opened blinded eyes. He opened up deaf ears. He caused those who were lame to get up and walk. My brothers and my sisters, in that same compassion, even cause him to willingly go on to an old rugged cross. And we too, as the body of Christ, especially the church, we must demonstrate compassion. Amen. Amen. That's why it's important for the church to have outreach and inreach ministries. That's why it's important for the church to not only Tell those who are the downtrodden, those who are going through the storms of life, those who are the outcasts of society. Not only are we praying for you, but there's got to be some action behind it. Can I get a witness here? 
Bible, the Bible, the Bible says uh, the fact that God's compassions, his mercies, they fail not. Now this simply speaks, this speaks, this speaks of God's immutability, which means again that he simply cannot change. God cannot get better. He cannot get worse. As the young people would say, simply because he's already all that in a bag of chips. Can I get a witness here? It's good to know that God never fails to be compassionate. He says in Malachi, for I am the Lord, and I change not. Can I get a witness here? Text says that his mercies, his compassion, they are new every morning. So every time we take a breath, every time we open up our eyes to a brand new day, God has given us another chance. He's given us another opportunity. He's given us another chance, amen, to behold his wonderful works. Can I get a witness here? And the church ought to be really, 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 really grateful and thankful for the mercies of God simply because there are times even when we as a church, as, as the body of Christ, amen, we don't always live up to God's standards, but yet he continues to smile upon us. And then secondly, we ought to thank God for his great love. The Lord's love is great simply because he is love. Amen. Uh, the Lord's great love abides even in times of trouble and divine judgment. Again, that's what Moses was talking about. One of the things that Moses was talking about in the 90th number of Psalms, God never stopped loving Israel despite the fact that he would have to discipline her from time to time just like he has to discipline us from time to time those whom the Lord loves he chastens it is God's great love for his people that spared that spares us amen amen even when his judgment wants to take over love steps in can I get a witness here and my brothers and my sisters, his love is what encourages us to go on. His love is unfailing. Thank God that his love, amen, looks beyond all of our faults and continues to supply our every need. Can I get a witness here? Uh, we ought to thank God that he loves us so much until he continues to let the sun shine upon us. And then, 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 thirdly, thank God for his faithfulness. The text says, great is, Lord, hold me here, thy faithfulness. Now, the word faithfulness means his firmness, his steadiness, his steadfastness, his fidelity. The word pictures God as one upon whom we can depend. Or oh, you may not depend, be able to depend on family and friends and Amen. Somewhere along the way, even myself, Pastor Green, I'll let you down. But I guarantee you that God will never let you down. David said, I once was young. Lord, hold me here. But now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging for bread. Can I get a witness here? And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder over the past 77 years, 
Is there anybody who can say for yourself that you can depend on God? Yes, my brothers and my sisters, our God is faithful to finish what he has started. Paul said that I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him. Yes, thank God that he is faithful. So much so until he says, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Thank God that he's faithful. He's faithful in his love for us. He's faithful in the fact that he provides for us. He's faithful in the fact that he protects us in the 91st number of Psalms. The word of God says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of an almighty God. I will say of the Lord that he is the my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Can I get a witness here? And then I can hear the 46th number of Psalms huh, saying that God is huh, our refuge and our strength. Huh. He's a very present help. Huh. In the time of trouble, huh, can I get a witness here? Huh, yes, he's faithful. Huh, he's brought Holy Chapel huh, down through the years huh, for 77 long years. Huh, there have been times huh, when the church has been attacked. Huh, there has been times huh, when the church has been talked about. Huh, the church has been lied on. The church has been mistreated. But thanks be to God that he is faithful. And because he's faithful, he said to the church, it was Jesus who said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail against it. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, and so I wonder, uh, is there anybody here today uh, who thank God uh, for 77 years? Uh, is there anybody here uh, who thank God uh, for 77 years uh, of singing Zion songs? Uh, 77 years of preaching and teaching 77 years of testimonies 77 years of telling the story about Jesus the Lamb of God Jesus the Lily of the Valley Jesus the bright and morning star Jesus my hope for the morrow Jesus, the one who walks with you, the one who talks with you, but most of all, tell the story about one Friday when they hung him high, they stretched him wide, they nailed his hands, they nailed his feet, they pissed his side, and he died. Didn't he die? Didn't he die? They laid him in a borrowed tomb. But thanks be to God, it was three days later. He got up. Did he get up? I've got all power. Say yeah. Say yes. Is he all right? 
He'll say, all right. I know he's all right. Right now is the best time to come because of